Ethereum is getting closer and closer to its final vision and now we have the specifications for Ethereum version 2.0 and that is very exciting it addresses many of the issues that we see with Ethereum today and I'm going to cover all of it today what it is how the development is going and when we can expect it to be released very exciting video but before we go into the details I of course need to remind you to go to academy.ivanontech.com and sign up for our online academy. It covers everything you need to know in order to become a smart contract developer, for example, developing on Ethereum or EOS and about blockchain fundamentals, what Bitcoin is, what Ethereum is, how to develop your own game using collectibles and other tokens that integrate into a computer game. Very exciting stuff. Get started today and click the link in the description. With that being said, we're going to get into the issue of ethereum version 2.0 the specifications was released uh, i think it was a couple of weeks back now but either way we're going to go through it because i haven't covered it yet so what exactly is ethereum version 2.0 well it is a merge of two other specifications that we've had and been talking about for quite some time now both casper and the sharding of the ethereum network and Casper, as you probably know, is the proof of stake update that has been planned for a long time to come to Ethereum, meaning when we will switch from proof of work to proof of stake. That is Casper and that is in, in the Ethereum 2.0 specification. There is also sharding, which means to split the Ethereum networks into a subsection of groups that can verify transactions and create blocks uh, per in parallel so that we don't we're not limited by one single thread one single core in this huge global pc that we're talking about so what was the issues that really brought us to these solutions because these two solutions are about first getting the cost down of running the ethereum network in terms of energy cost and investments into mining machines and secondly getting the transactions per second, the actual speed of the network up. Because if Ethereum really is going to become a global computer, then it needs to handle way more transactions. So that is what we're trying to solve. And we've seen over the years now how the mainnet performance on Ethereum has, in its worst cases, been too little. We need to inc increase the performance because otherwise we'll be left with a network that is clogged with transactions that never go through. So the benefits that we talked about previously is that Casper, of course, will bring down the cost of investing and of emissions and of energy cost and sharding will increase the transactions per second. And when we ask the developers about this, how much would it increase the performance to have sharding? They are talking in the range of a thousand X in terms of transactions per second. So it's not a small upgrade. The multiple, of course, you know, may, may switch or may be um, a bit less or a bit higher but the actual amplitude of that multiplication is quite large we're not talking about a 2x upgrade or 50 percent faster it is really really faster we still need to remember also that the ethereum uh, world computer if you want to call it that is still single threaded which means that we only can execute one uh, action at a time from a compute computational standpoint and that is not really what we need if we're talking about a global computer we need to be able to calculate things in parallel just like we can on a normal computer but uh, with the technology that we have today it's single threaded and it's too slow and that is uh, what we'll uh, hopefully get with sharding where we can have multiple shards we could divide the transactions and divide the state into perhaps hundreds or thousands separate you know small universes that can work on their own and then you have a structure that makes these uh, that coordinate between these different shards and of course we need to do this without security actually being an issue so that is the goal so how is this being developed right now and in terms of deployment when can we see this actually being something that we as developers will notice well currently they are working on the first phase also called phase zero and there are currently three phases that we see in the near future and the first one, as I said, the phase zero is called the, ba <laughs> the beacon chain, not the bacon chain, like the food, it's called the beacon chain. And that is the first layer of 
Ethereum 2.0 and that would be the coordination layer. So it will be a blockchain that is connected to what's called the proof of work main chain. So the Ethereum chain that we know today, the beacon chain will be connected to that and work as the coordination between all of these different shards that will come later. So when we divide up um, into multiple blockchains and to multiple shards, then this beacon layer, beacon chain, will be what coordinates in between all of these shards. And that is uh, supposed to go into a testnet phase of March this year. So it's not too far away that we'll see this beacon chain tested in a testnet environment. So good news there. But then we have two more phases, and that is to create actual shard chains. So the shard layer with all of these different shards but that is just phase zero then we come to phase one which is actually creating the shard chains it's hard to say but that is the next step in the process creating this technology that enables us to divide up as i said all of these uh, into all of these different shards all of these different group of people and blockchains and connect that to this beacon chain that is supposed to be rolled out in 2020 we don't have a very exact date yet, so that is quite far in the future. We are talking long-term development here. And then whenever that's done, we still have another layer to go be before we can start executing actual smart contracts on these shards. So the actual execution layer with the virtual machines, that is even further ahead. And they estimate that it will be in 2021. So this is not around the corner, even though we see development happening all the time so what are the potential um, the potential hurdles along the way well we still have a uh, a development uh, organization that is quite um, well it's divided between multiple companies or multiple organizations and we've seen some troubles in terms of these actually working together even though it's fantastic the work they have done hopefully they can uh, really get together and work even better as a team and also make sure that they have funding to continue because that will be very important for this work to actually be finished that they have the funding required and that they communicate clearly out to the development community so that we know how the progress is and how we can expect these changes to actually affect us as developers and affect the apps that are already out there what needs to happen in terms of you know adapting these apps to ethereum 2.0 and when is it going to happen? We need to have a clear communication channel between the development team, the research team, and us as developers. Very important moving forward. With that being said, I hope that you learned something in this video. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section as usual, and I will talk to you there. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you did not like it, hit the dislike button. And get subscribed to the channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.